What's up everybody? In this quick tips video, we're gonna be learning how to dodge and burn. Dodging and burning is basically painting on brightening or darkening strokes on your image. The point of this is to create contrast. Sometimes you wanna highlight certain areas and brighten it up and darken some other areas to sort of not de-emphasize it, so to speak. And what it really does is, like I said, add contrast to your images and is a good way of drawing leading lines or emphasizing leading lines naturally created in the image. So grab your image open Photoshop and let's dive right in. So we have two examples here that we're going to be dodging and burning. This is shot off the coast of Madeira, Portugal. This is called Ribeira da Janela. It's a famous rock formation. Low angle here, it's sort of a long exposure and we can see this was shot as the water was receding. There's a wave in the distance. And then we have another image here. This was also in Madeira and it's a waterfall. This actually, if I was to make this a final image, it would require focus stacking because you could see it is soft in the background here. But uh, for the purpose of this tutorial, we only want to learn and practice dodging and burning. So it'll work fine for our example. And this process is easiest with a Wacom tablet. It can be done with a mouse. But uh, to be honest, it's a sort of, uh, it's a process that feels sort of like painting. So to use uh, uh, brush strokes or pencil strokes with the Wacom tablet just makes it easier to do. So I would recommend getting a Wacom tablet, but you don't really need one. So there are many ways of doing this. There is actually a dodging and burning brush here. The burn tool, which darkens. The dodge, which lightens. And there's a dog there. So you can either use that tool, but actually the method that I prefer to use is you have your image, you control J, to duplicate the layer. You go into adjustments, curves, and decide whether you want to dodge or burn first. In this case, let us dodge to begin with. So we are going to brighten some of these areas here, the uh, foam, the uh, patterns in the water, and probably darken some of the darker parts of the water here, and just create a little bit more contrast in this image. I might add sometimes uh, sometimes I like to add shadows or just darken some areas where it is slightly shadowed and then just create a little bit more contrast there. Might do some stuff to the distant rock formation here. So what we want to do is alt click the add layer mask and that will hide the entire layer. So when it comes to masks in Photoshop, anything that is black or darker is hidden. Anything that is white or brighter is revealed. So you paint strokes of either white or black as we see here in the swatch panel and that will reveal or hide this mask that we have created on the brightened layer. So let's grab our Wacom tablet and get to work. And I'm going to speed through this just for the sake of making this a shorter video. I usually like to dodge and burn and really do everything at a 10% opacity. There are different techniques. People like to add flow which means the longer you hold the brush the more it will sort of paint but I just like to have things at 10% and then just make repeated strokes on whatever area that I would like to paint on. Now when it comes to dodging and burning, you don't really want to dodge and burn areas that don't really have contrast or shadow because it'll look very unnatural. So that's why I look for areas that are sort of lit up, whether from the sun or from reflections and in the case of the water, just some of the areas here and I will paint on them and not really, so I wouldn't, for example, dodge these darker areas because it wouldn't, for one, create contrast and for two, it's just not natural. So you can't really create contrast where there is none, though technically you can, it just won't look very good. So after doing a few strokes with the dodge layer, you can see a little bit of a difference here. And if you notice, I'm not painting so much on the outside because I'm gonna create a vignette and there's no point in brighting areas on the outside, which will just be distracting. I want the brighter area of the image to be everything here in the center and then the darker image the, the darker edges will be uh, vignetted so after doing some dodging we will duplicate control j the main layer again and then we will go to image adjustments curves and we will darken the whole thing we alt click add layer mask to hide that and we will repeat the process, this time painting the darker areas that we will be burning. And you want to periodically hide and reveal the layer just to see what areas you have burned or dodged and kind of see how the progress is coming along. Now 
that's probably good for the dodging and burning. You kind of don't want to overdo it because after we do the dodging and burning, we want to add contrast to the image and that will further emphasize the areas that we dodge and burn. So we're really directing the attention uh, that we want the eye to follow through an image. Doing final double checks here, what we will do. And there's different ways of working in Photoshop in where you can work non-destructively and create smart objects for each of, these, each of these layers and have everything very organized. But then you'll quickly end up with just way too many layers and you'll have to rename things. And then you have a giant file as well. So I personally like to work in what is considered a destructive matter where I make these changes. Then I go to layer, merge visible, and... Then I save, and there's really no going back, uh, except if you want to go back a few steps by Control Z undoing what you did. But uh, it's just really a lot easier to work with, and if I do mess up at the end of an edit, I'll probably just go back and start again. So we have completed that step, and just to see what this will look like, because of course I would also add some other things like Orton Blur, and a bunch of other things, the vignette and all that. I'm not going to really turn this into a final image for this tutorial. I'm just here to show you the dodge and burning. But I would bring this back into Lightroom, do the final edits there. But one of the steps that I would do is add the final contrast here. So we can simulate that by adding this tone curve here. We can see some, some of these areas are kind of blown out. Uh, there are ways of dealing with that that I won't cover in this tutorial. But we basically want to create a little bit of an S curve. And then some people like flatter uh, shadows or blacks in their image. I personally just lift the blacks a tiny bit, give it sort of a film kind of look, so to speak, and not make it perfectly black in the shadows. Uh, that's just a personal preference thing, but your style will define itself. So for comparison, I have another layer here, which is the completely unedited image that we started with. We can see it is a lot flatter, obviously, because of this last curve layer. But what photo editing is, is a lot of small tweaks, whether it's color, contrast, grading, all these little things that add together and create your own style. So it is definitely more contrasty of an image, but if you really study it, you can see how we have darkened these areas and brightened these other areas of the foam, and it makes it easier to lead your eye through the image because we have these rocks in the foreground, and the leading line, I would say, is probably these rocks going up in this direction. Um, the foam just kind of guides your eye a little bit more. Next we have our second image and what you'll see in this example is how you can create contrast in image when you have very flat lighting. This was shot in a sort of forest basically and I believe it was an overcast day so we don't really have strong sunlight coming in and then therefore we do not have any very harsh shadows which create the contrast in an image. So dodging and burning can be a good solution for adding that contrast in your image. You sort of have to identify where the shadows would be or sort of are and then you dodge or burn accordingly to emphasize them more. So let's begin like we did last time. Control J to duplicate this layer. This one I'm going to hide down here as our starting image for the comparison. We're going to go back into image adjustments curves and this time I'm going to start with the burning. So drag that tone curve down. Alt click the add layer button. Grab our brush. We're at 10%. And I should add that you can use the brackets on the keyboard to make the brush larger and smaller. That way you can paint with your right hand and control the size of the brush with your left hand. So let's begin. Let's hide and reveal that, see how we're coming along. Looks pretty good to me. We're going to duplicate the layer again, and then, like last time, we go to Image Adjustments, Curves, and we're gonna create the Dodge layer here. Alt-click, Add Layer, and get to Painting. So that looks pretty good. This is a flatter image, as I mentioned, so you don't want to overdo it here. So let us go to merge these layers once again and see how we're coming along in comparison to our original right here. As you can see, it is very flat and there's very little contrast except some of these areas in the back. And then we have added 
a degree of contrast. And then, of course, just like last time, we're going to add our adjustment layer to sort of simulate what we would finish off with in Lightroom. This stream back here is a little overexposed, a um, little bit blown out. I don't personally like it that much, but I would probably have shot bracketed images of this and I could fix that if I was uh, putting those brackets together. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we're just going to focus on the dodging and burning. Lift the shadows a tiny bit like last time. And create that S curve. You can add points further down in the shadows portion of the S curve. If you wanted to darken even the darker parts, this will probably do the whole image. This does the shadows and this does the darkest part of the shadows right here. So see how that's coming along. Definitely more contrast. And let's drag this layer up here and see how we began. Very flat image, as I mentioned, and then some very nice contrast going on here. And then, of course, this would be in focus if we had focus stacked this image. But you can see how the dodging and burning really makes the image pop a lot more than it would have otherwise. That's a wrap on this quick tips tutorial. I hope you guys learned something. I'm trying to make these ones shorter and just teach one particular method. Don't hesitate to leave a comment below if you have more questions about this dodging and burning technique and make sure to like and subscribe for more photography tutorials and travel content.